Necromo. Just another planet within Capellan Borders. May seem unremarkable at first glance. With its lone city, landing place, nestled near the equator, it doesn't exactly stand out. Yet, in its heyday, Necromo played a crucial role as a trading hub between the Capellans and St. Ives. However, the ravages of the succession wars reduce it to a mere shadow of its former self, with only 5,000 souls toiling away at a dropship repair facility. To make matters worse, the lack of an extraplanetary communication system meant that news and messages could only arrive from passing ships, shrouding the planet in rumors and speculation. But hope flickered back to life in the 3050s with the installation of the HPG network and the construction of the Ares Memorial Shipyard. These developments attracted a wave of settlers, swelling the population from 5,000 to a bustling 1.5 million. The planet team of activity and the Capella Navy stationed at a protective fleet in a system safeguarding the shipyard and its newfound prosperity. However, the tranquility was shattered by the word of Blake Jihad, plunging the Chromo into silence. So, what exactly transpired to plunge the Chromo, an ostensibly busting planet nestled within Capellan borders, into darkness and silence? During this period, the word of Blake was deeply engrossed in exploring drone technology. Despite the Battletech universe technological advancements, drone development remained relatively rudimentary due to interference from fusion engines, which emitted disruptive signals. This limitation relegated drones to a mere fraction of vehicle usage, mostly confined to space and air combat, with ground applications sporadic at best. However, the Capellans were also delving into drone research, particularly at Outpost Aberdeen, situated hundreds of kilometers south of Necromo's Soul City landing place. They conducted experiments with an AI dubbed The Broken, designed to oversee a ground force consisting solely of drones, thereby enhancing their military capabilities. In 3071, the Word of Blake orchestrated a calculated assault on Necromo, driven by the pursuit to further develop their drone technology. Their method was nothing short of overkill, employing a bombardment strategy involving the hurling of asteroids towards the planet. While the city itself remained relatively unscathed, the skies were cast in darkness from the resulting ash, with collateral damage extending to the planet's moon and the vital orbital shipyard. But the true horror unfolded with the release of the Necromic Plague within Landing Place. This insidious bioweapon induced violent seizures in its victims, rendering them unconscious and vulnerable. Spread through inhalation or bloodstream contact, those afflicted teetered on the brink of death, only to awaken as frenzied zombies at the slightest disturbance. Now they're not really like zombie zombies, they don't like just eat people. They're like uh, Left 4 Dead zombies where uh, the infection, the virus make them, makes them mad <laughs> with rage. Something like that. It's, it's similar to that, but they, they, they don't go around eating people. They just kill and kill and kill. The chaos ensued, enveloping both the populace and even elements of the World of Blake forces stationed there. Amidst the catastrophe, the broken AI stationed within the confines of Outpost Aberdeen found itself thrust into a dire predicament. In the aftermath of the attack, it entered a lockdown protocol, perceiving all entities on the Chromo as hostile. Trapped within the confines of his malfunctioning dropship, it grappled with conflicting imperatives, the need for assistance to repair its vessel, and the compulsion to repel perceived threats. This internal conflict birthed a fragmented persona within the AI, oscillating between assistance and aggression. As the planet descended into chaos, the Capellan authorities were left in the dark, both figuratively and literally. Reports trickled in of Necromo's abrupt disappearance from the interstellar communication grid, prompting swift and discreet investigations. Among the parties dispatched to ascertain the truth was the mercenary outfit known as Charmed Life, renowned for their discretion and resourcefulness. Yet like so many before them, they vanished without a trace, leaving their ultimate fate shrouded in uncertainty. Whether they succumbed to the horrors unleashed upon the Chromo or fell victim to the sinister imaginations of the broken remains of mystery, encapsulating the planet's descent into darkness and despair. So, just now I mentioned that the uh, Capellans made the Broken so that they could control like a drone force, like a drone ground force to help their armies against their ground forces. They actually did construct a few drone models for the Broken to control. They made four. Four of each, uh, what do you call that? Four of each weight. 
So you got light, medium, heavy, and assault. The light drone is a raven. The medium drone is a vindicator. The heavy drone is a cataphract. And the assault drone is the awesome. Let's give each a quick look right now. So first is the Raven or RVN 3LD, which is based on the Raven 3L. This drone variant removes the cockpit for a drone module, obviously, and they also remove the tag and a single heat sink. So in total, you would have 10 singles. It has 4.5 tons of ferrofibrous armor, an XL engine capable of pushing it up to 97 kilometers per hour. For weapons, you get a narc launcher on the left arm, so a narc launcher is a uh, is a missile beacon. You shoot it at something and it sticks there. And it, it, it sticks like a it sticks like a beacon on it, and then the missiles will home in on it. It's similar to the Artemis, except uh, the Artemis shoots a laser, right? And you need to have you need to be with uh, at, within line of sight all the time. This one, you just stick at something, and regardless, as long as it's in range, of course, as long as it's in range, regardless of where they are, the missiles will like uh, smartly fly. Uh, to it. This beacon works for everyone, not, not just you. So yeah, the raven, th this raven would like go up, launch a narc on something and run away. And with the narc attached to you, to whatever the raven shot, you know, maybe you have like a catapult or like a, like a archer or something far away, just launching uh, LRMs at the target. <laughs> You get 12 shots of this, of the narc beacons in the left torso, located in the left torso inside case. There's also an SRM-6 on the right torso, with 15 shots inside the left torso case too. In the middle, you get an active vagal probe, which is just an uh, enhanced radar basically. And on the right arm, there are two medium lasers. Man, the Raven is... I, I feel, personally, I feel like the Raven is up there in terms of um, light max. This is totally from experience and, you know, from research and everything and not from my Capellan bias. <laughs> because the Raven is Capellan Mag. No, it's not because of that. No, no. I'm not biased at all. Totally. <laughs> but anyway, next is the Vindicator Drone or the VND3LD. I've already covered this in the Vindicator video, but let's just go over it again anyway. Based on the 3L, the drone variant removes four jump jets and the case compartment on the right torso. It is covered with nine tons of star shield standard armor and comes with 15 doubles. It is powered by a GM 180 engine capable of pushing it to a top speed of 64 kilometers. The weapons remain the same with an ER PPC on the right arm and an LRM5 on the left torso with 24 shots. And you also get a medium pulse laser on the head. Then we have the heavy class drone the Cataphract CTF-3D-D. Two Ds in a row. Nice. <laughs> this 70 tonner is powered by a 280 GM XL engine, giving the mech a top speed of 64 km per hour. It has 11 tons of Kalan Royal Star standard armor and comes with 16 singles. The drone variant removed the jump jets the normal version comes with and is also equipped with an additional weapon, an AR small laser on the left arm. The wep other weapons are a medium laser and an ultra AC5 on the right arm with 20 shots in case, an LBX10 on the right torso with 10 slugs and 10 clusters in case, rear mounted mediums are located on both sides of the torsos and another medium on the left arm. Then finally we have the assault weight drone, the rare awesome AWS 9MD drone. Just like the others, this one is identical to its man counterpart except for the removal of two weapons. This variant is mounted with 15.5 tons of Duralax heavy special standard armor and 20 double heat sinks. The engine is a 320 Hermes XL engine capable of pushing the mech to 64 km per hour. It has three ER PPCs, two on the right side and one on the left torso, a medium pulse laser in the middle and a small pulse laser on the head. So, what happened to the Broken? Did the Capellans recover it and have been using it secretly in their many battles against their enemies? Is the AI still stuck on the planet? Or has the third party gotten themselves involved in all this? That is actually up to you because this whole thing is a RPG adventure that you could play yourself. 
What's pretty fun is about this eth is that this whole thing is canon, apparently. <laughs> Usually things like this, you know, season seasonal or like joke expansions, they all they're always not canon. That there, there, there's one where they made like mechs based off like medieval stuff or something. I forget what it's called, but that's not canon. This one is though. So this means that there is a zombie virus <laughs> that exists in this universe. And there's also like potentially species ending AI. Potentially, and I'm not saying that that it's like Skynet or anything. I'm just saying it could be Skynet. Just saying, man. <laughs> oh yeah, there's a potentially species ending AI just sitting somewhere waiting to be discovered. Unless you killed it, of course. Because in the GM section of the adventure book, right, it does give you some potential endings for the AI. There's one where you kill it, right? There's one where you you help it just for it to leave you behind. There's another one where you help it, you don't get left behind, but you're now stuck inside a dropship that was not made for human use. So there's no, uh, or, or there's a, there's like a disabled, uh, what we call that life support system on the uh, the boat, and if you didn't roll to figure it out, you didn't roll perception or whatever to notice that there's no air there's no air conditioning or anything once the sh the dropship gets to space you're gonna die even if you do survive somehow even if you like maybe you turn it on or whatever what then the ai the ai is going somewhere and it's not it's not gonna help you <laughs> it's going somewhere you're stuck on that boat man there's no food or anything probably you can breathe, but yeah, there's probably no food. <laughs> Until a concrete continuation of the broken is made, which I don't know if they ever will, the ultimate fate of the AI will remain a mystery. Necromo, on the other hand, unless they, unless the Capellans either bombard landing space or a landing place or like send in a, a like an entire force to clear out the zombies. There's the zombies there now. <laughs> there are probably like survivors here and there, like small patches of them, and, but who knows what happens, what's going to happen to them. Will they enough, have enough food to survive or whatever? Will they be able to contact the outside world? We will never know. They're just stuck on this planet that's like filled with zombies. <laughs> or at least one side of the planet is filled with zombies, not, not the other side of the planet. The other side of the planet is pretty barren, actually. There's just forces everywhere. I think all the animals died though from the uh, the attack. I think I read somewhere that the animals, all the fauna died. So uh, yeah, any survivors are kind of screwed. Hmm. So yeah, that's why the planet Necromo went silent. Thanks for watching everybody. I know that I take my sweet ass time with, uh, with these uh, lore videos. I'm fully aware of it. I do want to make more. I really do. It's just that sometimes I just don't know what. Plus, the videos that the the length of the videos that end up uh, what do you call that 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 end up as the length I guess is so long that kind of like burns me out from editing long videos because you know weekly I do do work on the videos right and those videos are like at most thirteen minutes I think that's longest so far. Well, at least with this new format I'm going with. I think the longest has been 13 minutes. These lore videos, you know, sometimes they can be extremely short. At times they can reach one hour, like the Alice video. That video really burned me out. Really did. <laughs> so much text I had to... So much text that I got to double check. The, you know, just double that triple check just to make sure I typed in the right thing. And appear at the right spot as well. I think that's why like I'm very slow with these uh, lower videos because just the the constant double checking that you gotta do to make sure you're giving out accurate information kind of gets to you. <laughs> that and also sometimes I just don't know what to do in terms of what I want to do next, and I still don't know what I want to do next after this as well. So maybe I'll do the Raven since I mentioned that. No, 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 no. maybe I'll do a short one, maybe like a Legionary or something. That's a Legionary. Why not? Why not? I've been playing a lot of Rome too lately. I'm 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 really into like the the ancient age now, so let's do a quick video of legionary next, right? 
that's a promise <laughs> thanks for watching everybody uh, again i got discord and twitch you know discord if you want to chat with me whatever twitch if you want to catch me live but i stream here as well i'm multi-stream but i would say when it comes to streaming twitch is the main thing not that i ignore youtube i just i just is that's there's just more things to do at twitch that's all man that's all <laughs> but that's been that that's been me take care buddy and i see you i'll see you guys next time on the legionary video that's a promise when that when will that come out legionary doesn't have a lot of lore of it so maybe next week i don't want to promise but next week maybe i don't know <laughs> we'll see we'll see but yeah, again take care and i'll see everybody next time see ya